Bro, look up the science of how vaccines work. Dude, I, I know how, uh, the science of how vaccines work, okay? There's little people inside of that inoculation and they have been uh lasered into being tiny like in the magic school bus and they fly around your entire body and they only have a six month lifespan because when you get tiny you can only live for six more months okay and they fly around in your body they go through the muscle and fly around in your body and whenever there's a virus whenever you're infected they pee, 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 you shoot it so that uh obviously they can't get all of the virus obviously so uh you can still uh get some of the uh the sickness but like they pee 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 shoot like all the worst parts like they kill so much of the virus with their healing ar-15s yes that's right Kyle rittenhouse literally had the same ar-15 that these guys have um so you avoid the worst symptoms profit motivated decision on i just if they made osmosis jump and described defeating covid like that i feel like more conservatives would be on board because one they're children and two like i i'm not even kidding if there's like a shooting component involved in the vaccination process like in their minds they'd be like all right i'm, I'm good with that they got patriots they got them patriotic osmosis jones mm -mm 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 -mm. that's right baby let's go okay so let's watch this. uh let's start off with the sean clip as a matter of fact uh sean did a long and exhaustive but otherwise pretty fun little uh little video on jimmy door called jimmy you door is a liar and i i do want to watch it i haven't watched one of these like youtube essays in a while in a long while but this is going to be one that i want to watch because i i find it to be interesting i like the i i liked it and i i normally don't cover jimmy door but this is good this is a good video so we are going to hello do everyone today we're going to be talking about anti-vaccine propaganda now, the ongoing coronavirus pandemic has obviously seen rise to a lot of discussion of vaccines and also, sadly, a lot of awful anti-vaccine arguments. And for examples of how this sort of propaganda works, we're going to take a look at the Jimmy Dore show. Now, Jimmy Dore is a comedian and political commentator who hosts the Jimmy Dore show here on YouTube on a channel with around 900,000 subscribers. If you aren't familiar with the Jimmy Dore show, Jimmy Dore styles himself as someone who critiques the political establishment, including the Democrats, from the left, and until recently his commentary on vaccines pee, followed that approach. On December 21st of last year, Dore put out a video titled Vaccine for Elites but Not for Nurses, in which he expresses his anger that healthcare executives were getting vaccinated before frontline workers. On April 30th of this year, Dore put out a video titled Bill Gates Denies Vaccine to Poor Countries, in which he criticises Gates for arguing in favour of patent protections on vaccines. And on the 2nd of March of last year, he put out a video titled Pelosi, Corona Vaccine Should Be Affordable, WTF, where he says the following. She wants to make the vaccines affordable. She is a virus. Yes. What kind of, you have to have a virus in your brain to think that, hey, you know, we could, we could, well, here's what I said. Uh, of course, we could distribute the vaccine to all citizens as soon as it's available and stop a pandemic, but we're not filthy socialists, so lots of people are going to die. That's what she's saying. A functioning government would inoculate its citizenry against a goddamn pandemic and forget about a profit motive. So from these videos and others, Dawes' position appears to be that vaccines are a good thing, that they should be free, available to everyone regardless of status, and that distributing the vaccine to all citizens as soon as it's available would stop the pandemic. However, recently something strange has been going on over at the Jimmy Dore show. Dore has taken a hard turn into peddling anti-vaccine propaganda in videos that are absolutely full of deception, flawed logic, and outright lies. As for why this is, you only need to go to his channel and look at the view counts on his recent videos. His anti-vaccine videos are some of the most popular content he's produced this year. Bringing in a piece of the anti-vaccine audience provides a real financial incentive to keep producing that sort of content because some of those new viewers attracted by the anti-vaccine content will become premium members or head over to the Jimmy Dore Comedy Store where they can buy mugs and hoodies and bags and hats and shirts and so on. Now, you might say, hold up there a second, Sean. Maybe this is an unfair criticism. Maybe this has nothing to do with money or chasing views. Maybe this is just a coincidence. 
Maybe Jimmy Dore just genuinely believes in the anti-vaccine arguments he feels compelled to share with the world. Maybe he's just not heard good counter-arguments yet, and I will admit that this is a possibility. A slight possibility. So, let's take a look at some of these arguments then. The first video I want to look at is titled Outbreak, 80% Vaccinated Singapore Has More Infections Than Ever, released on October 6th. This video features Dor reading out an article from Fortune.com titled Highly Vaccinated But More Cases Than Ever, Singapore Shows the World What Endemic COVID Might Look Like, written by Grady McGregor. And this video from Dor is a real masterclass in misleading an audience. And to see what Dor does here, we're going to read this article along with him and see how he represents it. So, the article starts out, Highly vaccinated Singapore is battling a record wave of COVID-19 infections just as the city plans to reopen to the world. But Singapore's 80% vaccination rate has kept severe cases and deaths down, potentially proving that living with the virus versus trying to eradicate it is the surest path out of the pandemic. Now, here's how Jimmy Dore starts reading the article. Uh, on Monday, Singapore recorded 1,647 cases of COVID-19, bringing its seven-day daily average to 1,545 cases, higher than any other previous wave of the pandemic. So what he did there was skip the first paragraph. Oh, I'm putting on loops on right now, boys. It's really good. This video is really good. The one that states that Singapore's high vaccination rate has kept severe cases and deaths down. And he started reading at the second paragraph, talking about the recent increase in COVID cases. So he's avoided mentioning the positive effects of the high vaccination rate there. But let's not draw any conclusions right now. So, following this sentence read out by Dor, the article says... But even as cases soar, COVID-19 deaths in Singapore have remained low. The city-state of 5.7 million people has averaged three deaths per day in the last week. Singapore's saving grace is its high vaccination coverage. So let's hear Jimmy read that. And they're super vaccinated in Singapore. We're going to find it. Experts say Singapore's climbing cases, more than half of which are unvaccinated individuals. Uh, hang on, where is he? Oh, he skipped down to here, the sentence that starts out, experts say that Singapore's climbing cases and so on. So that's twice now that he's skipped mentioning the positive effects of vaccination. Now, the sentence following this one also mentions Singapore's low death rate. It says, as long as deaths remain low, Singapore can set an example for how other countries, especially those that have maintained zero tolerance for COVID-19, can emerge from the pandemic. So let's listen to Jimmy read that. Singapore has now fully vaccinated over 80% of its population, one of the highest rates in the world. No, he's gone again. Now he's back up here, having expertly dodged multiple separate instances of the article directly praising Singapore's high vaccination rate. The best that Jimmy Dore manages is showing this one reference to, quote, widespread immunity, but he does not make clear, as the article does, that this widespread immunity is due in large part to the high vaccination rate. And this is how Jimmy reads out the rest of the article. Well, no, he's not reading the article, really. He's picking particular sentences out of it in order to present a biased view of it. This is an article about how Singapore's high vaccination rate has kept deaths low even as virus cases increase. I don't understand. Uh, does Sean not recognize that Jimmy Dore simply did not want to get into the nitty and the gritty? That's right, folks. That's precisely what happened here. Jimmy Dore just doesn't like to get into the nitty gritty like Tim Pool. That's just how it is. I don't understand. Uh, you know, some people just don't want to get into all of that. Okay? Yeah, you just didn't factor that in. That's right. Psh, reading an article and, like, actually uh, capturing the parts that completely contradict your viewpoint. Hmm. Not good. Can't do that while setting a narrative, can we? When's the last time you got into the nitty-gritty? I regularly do, and when I find out something that contradicts what I previously thought, I recognize that I was wrong, admit that I was wrong, and then start going on a mass banning spree of idiots who are like, owned Omegalol or backpedaling Omegalol, because here at the Hasanabi broadcast, we admit when we're wrong, because when you find out new information, 
you change your perspective. Obviously, if your overarching values, such as like in the Kyle Rittenhouse case, for example, still are that uh, you shouldn't be a 17-year-old with an AR-15 going to a riot so you can get a couple legal kills, then that's not going to change regardless of whatever the evidence that is presented. Unless there was a very reasonable reason for why this mother had an AR-15 uh, other than he was there to protect someone else's private property, you know? As the country eases lockdown restrictions, it's a success story. Jimmy Dore, by refusing to mention the positive effects of vaccination, turns it into a scaremongering article about an increase in cases in order to make the vaccine look ineffective. Now, further down the article, Jimmy Dore does something even worse than simply selectively quote the article. He actually changes the text in order to better suit his argument. So first, let's read the relevant part of the article. Throughout July and August, cases in Singapore ticked up to over 100 per day after nearly a year of almost no infections due to the city's previous zero-tolerance policy. That policy included stay-at-home orders, intensive testing and contact tracing, and a ban on foreign visitors. This month, cases have risen exponentially from 180 on September 1st to roughly 500 by mid-September and to nearly 1500 this week. On Monday, Singapore said that it would reintroduce some social distancing measures, including reducing dining groups from 5 to 2 people at restaurants and directing companies to allow employees to work from home. Singapore's government said the measures will be in place for at least one month to prevent the healthcare system from being overwhelmed and to allow the city to scale up services to help infected patients recover at home. So what's happened here, according to this article anyway, is that Singapore had very strict lockdown measures and a low number of coronavirus cases. Once a large percentage of the country was vaccinated, however, they started easing those lockdown measures, which led, of course, expectedly, to an increase in cases. But since the country has a very high vaccination rate, the number of deaths remained low. The vaccine, of course, does not make you completely immune from catching the virus, but it does make it much, much less likely that you will develop serious symptoms or die as a result of catching the virus. However, Singapore is still wary of overloading its hospitals, so is planning to reintroduce lockdown measures as needed in order to control the number of cases. This all makes perfect sense. Very strict lockdown orders, then a high vaccination rate, then a lifting of those orders leading to increasing cases, with some orders reintroduced in order to avoid overwhelming healthcare capacity. This is not too hard to follow, you'd think. But Singapore's growing caseload has raised alarms, nonetheless because of the speed at which cases have climbed. Despite policies including stay-at-home orders, intensive testing and contact tracing, and a ban on foreign visitors, and 80% of them are vaccinated, they're having the biggest outbreak ever. Now, sharp-eyed viewers will have noticed that what Dor just read out is not what the article says. And let's look at them side by side here. The article says, throughout July and August, cases in Singapore ticked up to over 100 per day after nearly a year of almost no infections due to the city's previous zero-tolerance policy. Emphasis on the word previous there. Then it goes on to say, that policy included stay-at-home orders, intensive testing, and so on. Jimmy Dore's text says, the speed at which cases have climbed despite policies, including stay-at-home orders, intensive testing, and so on. He snips out the sentence, making it clear that these policies were the previous policies, the policies that were lifted, and he puts the word despite in there. Now, the word despite is not in this paragraph in the original article, and this makes it seem like these policies are current, ongoing policies. He's rewriting what the article says to make it say something different. Now, I'd like to pause here and ask a question to any fans of Jimmy Dore's content that might be watching this video. Now, I know that the response to me saying Jimmy Dore produces anti-vaccine content will be to say, no, he doesn't. Dore doesn't directly tell anyone not to get the vaccine. He got the vaccine. And he says that you can get the vaccine if you like. You know, he's not anti-vaccine. He's just asking questions. He's just got some concerns. He's just reporting the vaccine news. Now, my question is, if this was true, if Jimmy Dore really was just innocently asking questions and provoking debate, why does he need to lie? Why is he selectively quoting the article to avoid mentioning the positive effects of vaccination? Why is he editing the text of the article to make lockdown measures seem ineffective? If he was just reporting the news, he would just read out the article in full, right? 
If he's just asking questions, why not ask, why does Singapore have one of the lowest COVID death rates in the world? And the answer is because Jimmy Dore is trying to present a biased view of vaccines. He is producing content specifically to attempt to draw in an anti-vaccine audience. He's just doing it with plausible deniability because he doesn't want to be banned by YouTube. But let's be fair here. Maybe you're thinking, well, okay, the way Jimmy Dore read out that one article was a bit dodgy, but I'm not ready to brand him a liar over it. I need more evidence for that. So, okay, how about this? On the 14th of October, the site healthfeedback.org published an article that was critical of Jimmy Dore's statements about COVID-19. And in particular here, we're interested in their criticism of his statements about the drug ivermectin. They say, Dore commented on ivermectin's effectiveness against COVID-19, alleging that the mainstream news does not tell you the truth about COVID-19. They lied to you about ivermectin, said it was not a human medicine when it won the Nobel Prize for Human Medicine in 2015. While it is true that ivermectin is used in humans and that the scientist who discovered it won a Nobel Prize, what Dore didn't tell his viewers was that neither of those facts have any bearing on whether ivermectin is effective against COVID-19 specifically. Reliable studies haven't shown that ivermectin is effective against COVID-19. So, apparently, Jimmy Dore has been spreading inaccurate information about ivermectin, telling his audience that ivermectin is effective in treating COVID, which would be very irresponsible. However, in a video posted to YouTube on the 19th of October, Jimmy Dore defended himself against the claims in this article by saying that they're all made up. Apart from the claim about vaccine administration, Dor commented on ivermectin's effectiveness against COVID-19. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Now, did you hear me say that ivermectin has been proven to treat COVID? And that because it won the Nobel Prize in medicine in 2015, that means it could treat COVID? I never said that, did I? I didn't say anything like that. So according to Jimmy Dore, he's never said anything like the claims in the article. He's never said ivermectin is effective in treating COVID. However, a uh, widespread distribution of ivermectin proves effective in Mexico against COVID-19. This has been suppressed. Uh, and now we're finding out that ivermectin treats this COVID. That if you just use ivermectin, and by the way, this data has been out there for a while. Uh-oh. Now, if you go looking for that video on Jimmy Dore's YouTube channel, uh, you won't find it. It's actually specifically against YouTube's content policies to post videos that feature, quote, categorical claims that ivermectin is an effective treatment for COVID-19. So did YouTube delete that video? Did Jimmy Dore take it down, perhaps in preparation to claim that he never said exactly what he did say in the video? I don't know. What Jimmy can't take down, though, is his appearance on Joe Rogan's show. So what about, uh, like, <laughs> can we talk about it? Yeah. ivermectin? Yeah, sure. So uh, it's, it, I covered it, what they did in Mexico City, mm -hmm. and ivermectin seems to be a drug that not only treats it, but it will prevent you from getting it. Well, now. According to Jimmy Dore, ivermectin doesn't just seem like it treats COVID, it will actually stop you from getting it altogether. Now, if you watch that clip, it's quite funny, because by making such a direct medical claim, he clearly worries Rogan a bit, who starts saying, well, we need more studies, you know, I'm just an MMA guy, don't listen to me about health stuff. Rogan's clearly also worried about the funniest part about this is that like they literally are aware when they make claims like this especially like Joe Rogan and shit they are aware like they're aware at the very least of YouTube's restrictive policies they know what the is going on when they're like uh, duh, yeah don't uh, don't say that uh yeah it's really up dude it's so up dude Ben Shapiro actually pushed back on Joe's vaccine hesitancy and misinfo on the podcast wait what are you serious? I need to see that. The wrath of the YouTube censors. And speaking of, Jimmy Dore's video, YouTube's new censorship rampage over vaccines, starts out with Dore making a rather embarrassing error. And I wish I had Glenn Greenwald on to talk about this with me, but the irony here is that inside this article, talking about how YouTube's going to stop misinformation about vaccines, it includes misinformation about vaccines. This is from the AP, 
This will not be censored at Twitter. This will not be censored. This is misinformation. That is not true. Scientists do not say that the vaccines will end the COVID-19 pandemic. That is not what they say. Do you want to know what they say? COVID-19 won't be eradicated. Who says that? The WHO, the WHO. The World Health Organization says that. The AP is misinforming you. So do you understand why there shouldn't be censorship ever? So Dorfer shows this article from the AP, which states that scientists say public acceptance of free immunizations will end the COVID-19 pandemic. Then he shows this article from TheHill.com, which states global health experts say COVID-19 won't be eradicated. Now, Dorr treats these quotes as if they're contradictory, and goes on for several minutes about how this proves the press is lying to you and you can't censor independent voices like his, and so on. However, he's made a mistake here, because these two quotes are not contradictory. Ending the current COVID-19 pandemic can be done without eradicating COVID-19 because the word pandemic describes the state, not the existence, of the virus. With sufficient resistance to the virus, the worldwide pandemic would end, even if the virus itself continues to circulate. And one of the best ways to increase a population's resistance to the virus is widespread vaccination. I haven't read the second article, but I can already tell that I'm willing to bet that that second article probably literally says, given how much vaccine hesitancy has happened in the United States and other uh, Western uh, nations that are developed that have access to safe and free vaccinations, it is very unlikely that the pandemic will, or COVID-19 will obviously not be eradicated, but it's also very unlikely that the pandemic will even and as a consequence of people like Jimmy Dore, ironically, but let's see. Now you'd think Jimmy Dore would know this, since as we saw earlier, he stated last year that distributing the vaccine to all citizens as soon as it's available would stop the pandemic. Now this either means that Jimmy Dore believes that ending the pandemic necessarily entails entirely wiping out the virus, and I don't believe he's that clueless, or it means that he did understand that widespread vaccination could end the pandemic as he stated, and he's just decided to forget that information for some reason. Next up, I want to give an example of how bad scientific practices can give rise to anti-vaccine myths. So let's start with the Jimmy Dore video study, Vaccines Being Administered Incorrectly, and we will track this claim back to the source. So in this video, Jimmy Dore is arguing that the way COVID-19 vaccines are administered is incorrect and dangerous, and he does this by watching and repeating the arguments of a different YouTube video, that being inadvertent intravenous injections from a YouTuber called John Campbell. In that video, Campbell is reading out the study uh, that's Dr. John Campbell? The intravenous injection of coronavirus disease 2019 mRNA vaccine can induce acute myopericarditis in mouse model. So what did this study investigate? Well, the COVID-19 vaccine is an intramuscular, or IM, injection, meaning it's injected into a muscle, typically the deltoid. This study attempts to discover what would happen with an intravenous, or IV, injection of the vaccine, meaning it's injected directly into the bloodstream. So they injected some mice with the vaccine, some with IM injections, some with IV injections. Later, they dissected the mice, the poor mice, and they report that they found myopericarditis in the IV group, myopericarditis being an inflammation of parts of the heart. So the conclusion this far would seem to be that IV injection of the vaccine can be bad for the heart. Emphasis on seem to be there. Please do not actually make any conclusions right now. Stick with me to the end of this bit. Trust me, there is a twist up ahead. Now, of course, in humans, the vaccine is injected in a muscle and not intravenously. So we might say, what's the problem, right? Just don't inject it intravenously and we're okay. Uh, but what the authors of this study are concerned about is the possibility of an accidental intravenous injection. So the person administering the injection aims to inject the vaccine into a muscle, but accidentally injects it into the bloodstream. And they recommend blood aspiration as a way to avoid this possibility. Now, aspiration is the drawing back of the syringe plunger after insertion to check if any blood flows back into the needle, basically. They recommend this as a way for the person administering the vaccine to make sure they're injecting in the right place. 
However, the World Health Organization and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention do not recommend aspiration during the administration of the vaccine because the size of the needle and the size of the blood vessels at the site of injection mean that it's an unnecessary practice, they say. The CDC guidance on vaccine administration states that aspiration before injection of vaccines or toxoids is not necessary because no large blood vessels are present at the recommended injection sites. If this is true, it means that there is no way to accidentally replicate the sort of intentional intravenous injection seen in the experiment with the mice. So since they consider it unnecessary and it also leads to more painful injections, they recommend against it. Now it needs to be made very clear here that this study did not find evidence of accidental intravenous injections of any COVID-19 vaccine. That's not what the study was about. They treated it as a hypothetical possibility and then sought to investigate what would happen as a result. For evidence of the possibility of accidental intravenous injection, they point to a study called Blood Aspiration During IM Injection, a self-reporting study of nurses who were asked questions about blood aspiration. Uh, but I find this kind of tenuous. That study concerns all intramuscular medical injections, not just vaccine injections, in different parts of the body, not just where vaccines are usually administered, and it had an incredibly small sample size, being, quote, limited to nurses in one small community hospital and one state university. The study did not survey all the nurses in these settings. As a result, the sample may not represent the population of nurses practicing and cannot be generalized. So what do we have? Isn't it fun? to look over vaccine misinformation videos and then see like <clears throat> virtually every single take that Jimmy Dore has had and every single take that anti-vaxxers have had in the past demonstrated once again because you heard it in the chat like a million times over. This and like 12 other vaccine misinfo videos, people just watch them, hear that, and then immediately rush in here, I feel like, to regurgitate exactly what they saw in the video without any analysis, no critical thought. Here then. Well, we have one study arguing in favor of aspiration during vaccine injections versus the generally accepted guidelines stating that it's unnecessary. Phrasing this extremely generously to the authors of the study, we could say that some medical professionals recommend aspiration for vaccine injections, and some don't. So how do we get from here to Jimmy Dore stating outright that they're administering the jabs incorrectly? And now we find out they're administering the jabs incorrectly. Jimmy Dore has taken it upon himself to settle the argument here, and he's done it seemingly at random. He's picked the side Did that we agrees find that with out? him, funnily enough, and said they're the ones who are correct here, based upon no evidence other than what he would like to be true, it seems. Now, it might shock you to hear this, but I disagree with Jimmy Dore here. By itself, I don't find this study credible. But unlike Jimmy Dore, I have an actual reason for thinking that. So this paper was linked on pubpeer.com, which is a website for discussion and review of scientific publications. And the top comment is from Elizabeth M. Bick. Now, Elizabeth Bick has a Wikipedia page, and allow me to quote briefly from that. Elizabeth Bick is a Dutch microbiologist and scientific integrity consultant. Bick is known for her work detecting photo manipulation in scientific publications and identifying over 4,000 potential cases of improper research conduct. So Elizabeth Bick and the other commenters on PubPeer have some concerns about this paper. And allow me to relay a few of those. Firstly, there's some discussion about the amount of vaccine that the mice were administered, with Bick estimating that the mice received a dose that was, relative to their body weight, between 50 and 500 times the dose which is given to a human. However, another comment points out that due to the metabolic differences between mice and humans, the relative difference in dosage wouldn't actually be that extreme. However, they still estimate that it would be multiple times the dose given to a human. Now, I don't know anything about the relative metabolic rates of mice and men, I'm afraid, so I'm going to call this one a wash. You know, it's a possible overdose, but I can't say conclusively because I just don't know. I have no way to fairly decide one way or the other here. So next up, and more conclusively, uh, the commenters claim the strain of lab mice that were used in the study are apparently prone to the sort of heart problems that the study was looking for, and I quote, Pericardial fibrosis and mineralization is a common background finding in healthy Balb C mice, as any pathologist with mouse experience can attest. 
The lesions shown in figures 1 and 2 show pericardial fibrosis and calcification one or two days after vaccination, which seems incredibly fast. It usually takes five days to see this extent of fibrosis. And other commenters chimed in supporting these claims, with one stating, This paper reports what appears to be naturally occurring pericardial lesions in bulb C mice. It's essentially impossible to get such advanced lesions in one to two days post-injection. Now, if this were true, if this study really is just showing what were already existing heart issues in these mice, uh, why is the study reporting that they were found more often in the intravenous group? What a mystery we have here. Well, let's attempt to solve it. And we'll start with a very basic hypothesis. Uh, what if the authors of this study just mixed the mice up? You know, what if it was that simple? So let's investigate, if only to disprove this hypothesis. Now this study- Bro, This is an incredibly thorough takedown. Like, congratulations to Sean for just doing a really, just making a really good video overall includes lots of pictures of dead and dissected mice, which do not worry, I will not be showing here. Uh, what I will be showing is scans of their heart tissue, such as this one, figure two, which shows, quote, blue stained thickened visceral pericardium over the right atrium and ventricle at one DPI of IV vaccine, which became more prominent at two DPI, that's days post-injection there. So this scan in figure 2a shows a heart from the group which was given the intravenous mRNA vaccine, and the author- My man is literally like, I live in the nitty and the gritty. Let's identify what they say are problems with it. So let's take a look at how this compares to a scan of a heart from the group of mice who were given the intramuscular injection. So this is figure 5 from the section titled, I am mRNA vaccine administration only induced mild myocardial congestion and edema. And this particular scan in figure 5c is from a mouse who received an IM injection instead of an IV injection, and thus has fewer heart problems apparently. And let's take a look at these side by side. So IV mouse on the left, IM mouse on the right. Except, and I've always wanted to do this, uh, computer, enhance, rotate right image 115 degrees, combine, and would you look at that? This is the same image right here. These heart scans are cited both to show the damage caused by intravenous injection and the relative lack of damage caused by intramuscular injection, but it's the same scan. This is the same mouse. So what happened here then? Well, to put it in scientific terms, they ballsed it up. This same sample is marked both IV vaccine 2DPI and IM vaccine 2DPI, which were the two groups the study was seeking to compare. So they've mixed something up somewhere, clearly. And props to Elizabeth Bick and the commenters over at PubPeer for spotting this, of course. Now, what this means is that the results of this study are suspect now. How many other samples did the authors of this study accidentally put in the wrong groups? I don't know, and nor does John Campbell or Jimmy Dore. All we can conclusively learn from this study is that the study should probably be performed again. Now, to be fair, you might argue that maybe I'm overplaying this one mistake. After all, it is only one mistake. And another counter-argument could be that the strain of mouse doesn't matter too much either, even if they are prone to heart problems, because with a large enough sample size, those problems Okay, maybe he's too, uh, maybe he's getting in too deep. It's like, bro, we don't need to know all of this, dude. Or the counters to it as well. Like, yeah, the study is scuffed. We can move, we can move on. You know what I mean? And the occasional mistake wouldn't impact the overall data too much. It would all come out in the wash. So, what sort of group sizes are we looking at with these mice? Well, uh, six mice, for instance, in the 2DPI IM group. So, and this is something important to remember beyond this one study, by the way. If you ever hear that this or that was found in 50% of tested mice, that could be only three mice, uh, one of which in this particular study ended up in the wrong group somehow. What we're seeing here is bad science getting picked up and repeated by anti-vaccine propagandists. Jimmy Dore and John Campbell between them have 2 million YouTube subscribers, and their videos using this study to claim vaccines are being administered incorrectly have hundreds of thousands of views. And a lot of those viewers are going to go away, and all they'll remember and possibly repeat to other people is, well, I saw a video about a study that said vaccines damage your heart. 
Pointing out the fact that there were major problems with the study is all well and good, but it feels like the damage has already been done at this point. Now, just to be clear here, this study is rubbish, but I don't mean to give the impression that an accidental intravenous injection is completely impossible. Of course, as with all medical procedures, mistakes can and do happen. And with millions of vaccinations being carried out, it would be unreasonable to assume that no mistakes occur anywhere. And if some more rigorous studies than this one led to a change in the way the medical community at large administers vaccines, I would have no criticism of that. And if further, even more rigorous studies were then carried out and the medical community changed back to the current way of administering vaccines, I'd have no The other problem is that like, I mean, these are the same people. Dude, I, I think I might end the stream early today. I'm like uh, mega annoyed at the chat right now. Uh, I'm just going to let you guys know. I'm like very close. It's just like, you can't sit through a 50 minute video, dude. You're like literally like spamming, be like, this is a sleeper. It's just like Sussy is, is very close to being removed. I'm just letting you guys know ahead of time. Sussy is very close to being removed from the equation here, uh, from the chat. Anyway, the thing I was going to say is these are the same guys that also latch on with like desperation. I would even say onto like any study, even if it's been, even if it's been pulled on the efficacy of ivermectin like of course because they're not trying to arrive at the truth they are trying to once again um basically cultivate an audience of anti-vaxxers that will buy their merch and all this other shit that they sell and become long-term subscribers and fans i find that to be disgusting to be uh quite honest I, I think that that is like a really indecent really immoral thing to do to purposely misinform people while most likely knowing better, which I think Jimmy Dore is not the brightest bulb, but like, I do think he, he knows better. I think a lot of these anti-vaxxer and anti-vaxxer adjacent uh, dickheads know better. And they have uh, either A, gone too far down the rabbit hole, or B, decided that like, you know, they came out with this already and it's too late to go back, or C, just straight up deliberately misinforming people with no care whatsoever because they don't give a fuck about anyone else other than other than their own bottom line. Pick and choose. I do feel like uh, Joe Rogan is a little bit on the, uh, instead of like grifting the anti-vax rhetoric shit, I think he personally is like a dumb ape that now can't see anything other than like anti-vaxxers and anti-vax conspiracies. Um, whereas I feel like Jimmy Dore is a little bit more interested in the audience development aspect of it. And the reason for why I say that is not to like protect Joe Rogan or anything like that. The reason why I say that is because Joe Rogan's community despises the anti-vax shit that he puts out for the most part. Yeah, there are a lot of anti-vax dildos in his community too. But as far as I've seen, there are plenty more people who are like, dude, just shut the fuck up about vaccines. It's like you're crying about them every week. This is sleeper content. Go back to talking about DMT. He literally has like lost the... He, I feel like this has been a larger onslaught of Rogan viewership. Um, more so than like hyping up a lot of far-right content creators. Criticism of that either. Medical science, like all science, changes and updates as we learn new information. It's not some hypocrisy, it's not some trick being played on us, it's just the way science happens. Anyway, let's move on and look at another video. So this is Vax Side Effect, Sudden Hearing Loss Reported, and here Jimmy Dore falls into that most classic of argumentative pitfalls the correlation versus causation misunderstanding. So the portion of this video that is actually about hearing loss is mostly just Dor watching a news report from ABC15 about some people who reported experiencing tinnitus after being vaccinated against COVID-19. A lot of Dor's videos consist of him just watching other videos and making faces at them actually. The ABC 15 investigators heard from people all over the country who said they reported sudden or worsening tinnitus to the CDC's Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, VAERS. In all, more than 10,000 Americans, including 217 Arizonans, reported. That's one out of every 21,000 people. By the way, that's the proper way to say that word, but I will never say it like that. It's tinnitus. People who got the COVID-19 vaccine. Now then, we need to be careful and responsible when investigating and reporting this sort of thing. You see, the issue here is one of scale. It might be that you can find 217 people in Arizona, say, who reported tinnitus after being vaccinated. 
but Arizona has a population of millions of people, and if an area's healthcare system vaccinates millions of people, that is a huge data set to pull from. And tinnitus can have several possible causes, sinus congestion, stress, anxiety, high blood pressure, and so on. Out of millions of people, we'd expect some of those people to report tinnitus anyway on just an average week with no vaccinations whatsoever. So this could just be a coincidence, right? They could be incorrectly identifying the cause of their tinnitus as the recent vaccination, due to nothing more than unfortunate timing. And let's do a thought experiment here. Let's imagine that millions of people in a country are asked to go to a medical facility and have a doctor or nurse click their fingers in front of that person's face. That's all, then they leave and go about their lives. So the basic framework of how we're currently vaccinating people only without the vaccinations, just a finger click. Now, of those millions of people, some of them will develop tinnitus in the following week. Some of them will experience headaches. Some of them will have a heart attack or a stroke, and some of them will die. But none of that will have anything at all to do with the finger click. It would be a coincidence. Because we have millions of people experiencing an event, we have millions of chances for tinnitus and headaches and heart attacks to happen. But people, as a rule, aren't very good at thinking in terms of very large numbers. You'd only need a dozen or so people having heart attacks within a week of the finger click to build an alarmist narrative about finger clicks causing heart attacks or what. Uh oh. It's over now. I believe finger clicks are causing heart attacks. Oh no. Do not click your finger near me, you lip tart devils. Whatever. But they wouldn't, of course. It would be entirely coincidental. What you would need to start to prove a link between finger clicks and heart attacks is an elevated number of heart attacks relative to what we would usually expect. By itself, any one case is just anecdotal evidence. For instance, Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend says his testicles swelled up after getting vaccinated. Does that anecdotal evidence prove that vaccines make your testicles swell? No, it doesn't. By themselves, Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend's giant balls can't tell us anything about the COVID-19 vaccine. When reporting things like this, it's better to cite actual medical studies looking for a direct link between vaccines and various symptoms, instead of relying on individual anecdotal evidence. It's also not good to put that anecdotal evidence in a video titled Vax Side Effect as if it's already been settled. Now, it's, a, it's not a good example. A better example would be to talk about how at the top of the hour, there's an anecdote that you see a 60 second ad break on the Hasanabi broadcast. Now, of course, if you no longer want to see the ads, well, some might say you can just subscribe simply for $5 or you can subscribe simply for free with the Twitch Prime. By connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account, you get one free Prime subscription a month and you can use it here to engage in the art of ad break avoidance, right? Now, that would be a, a data point that you could use to tell other people. You know, there's obviously other ways that you can do ad avoidance as well, but the most effective way that I can relay to you is by subscribing for $5 or for free. Here's the one minute ad break now. Now, I'm sure that right now you're all saying, hold up there, Sean. COVID-19, as a respiratory illness, can cause signs. You can also sit in the chat and wait for gifted. There's another way that you can avoid it. Sometimes it happens. Sinus problems and therefore tinnitus. And it does so at much higher rates than among those who reported tinnitus after being vaccinated. And this is especially true of the Delta variant, which has been shown to more greatly affect the upper respiratory tract. So this is all moot, right? If you want to avoid getting tinnitus, it's still better to be vaccinated than not. And you're right to say all that. Well done. A few anecdotal cases of tinnitus not proven to be linked to the vaccine is no argument whatsoever against the vaccine. It does not stand up to scrutiny. But here's where we need to talk about the way in which conspiracy theories are delivered from the conspiracy theorist to their audience, which is what is happening here. Because the issue is that this video is not supposed to stand up to scrutiny. None of these videos are supposed to stand up to scrutiny, they're all meant to be only a single piece of Thank you, Anonymous Gifter, for the 10 gifted subs. Thank you, Morty933, for the 5 gifted subs. ...of evidence in this. An overwhelming barrage of relentless, sort-of evidence. 
it doesn't matter if you disapprove of one piece of evidence because there's just Thank so you, much of it and all of it comes with the plausible deniability. Jimmy Dore's grift works by producing an extremely large amount of air quotes evidence, none of which when examined closely will stand up. Uh, but taken together, it gives the impression Thank that you, there Kev Rhino, be some for the sort gifting. of point here, right? This is the quantity, not quality style of argument. If you don't like one argument, I've got another. And if you don't like that argument, I've got another. And so on and so forth until you just run out of energy to refute all of this. And if you ever do manage to pin the conspiracy theorists down on one particular irrefutable point, they'll just lie and claim they never said what they said, like we saw Jimmy Dore do with his statements about Ivermectin. And unfortunately, one result of anti-vaccine propaganda Thank like you, this Boke is that the for the five years. end up getting- the f is Boke way, dude? I mean, I know what it is. Thank you for the five years. Getting seriously sick and possibly dying. And here, I'd like to be careful to make a distinction between anti-vaccine propagandists and people who I guess we call vaccine hesitant. The majority of vaccinated people fall into the vaccine hesitant camp. They aren't committed to opposing vaccines, they just aren't sure what is the safest course of action. Of course, the safest course of action is to be vaccinated, and the vaccine hesitant have undoubtedly heard a lot of positive things about vaccines, but they've also Thank probably you, heard a fair few vaccine lies, like those given a platform by people like Thank you, Jim. Chaseables, for the 20 of the subs. Me door. Now, Dor himself isn't even pushing anti-vaccine conspiracies for ideological reasons, I don't think. I don't think he actually has any opinions, to be honest. He's just someone who's willing to cash in on a trend, even if it ends up getting people killed. Anyway, one way the vaccine-hesitant group is targeted by the propagandists is by exploiting a distrust of authority. Vaccine-hesitant oh, yeah. people might not have much trust in the political system in which they live, and that can be for very valid reasons. Beyond the usual reasons to distrust people in power, with regards to the pandemic we've seen them giving inaccurate or contradictory medical advice, making promises they can't keep, not following their own lockdown regulations, and so on. There is a lot to criticize there. And there's also a lot to criticize the pharmaceutical in Especially in America, because Americans have this like inherent mistrust of authorities. They all are like a bunch of pathetic, idiotic, I'm actually a, a truth seeker, brother. I know the secrets that other people don't type uh, individualists, okay? And that plays really well with dumbass grifters uh, uh, trying to Google Jimmy Darko. Thank you for the 10 uh, gift subs. Um, That plays really well with uh, dumbass grifters who want to get critical thinkers on board with their narrative. It's so f annoying, dude. ...industry for, and this is particularly true in the United States, where there is an entirely understandable skepticism of their for-profit healthcare system. So it's easy for the propagandists to point to all this hypocrisy, corruption, and incompetence, and then try to marry that to the science of vaccination. See, these powerful people are clueless and corrupt and untrustworthy, and they're telling you to get vaccinated. So the conclusion, either spoken directly or left implied, is- <laughs> The magic healing AR-15, thank you for the- The magic healing AR-15, thank you for the five gifted subs. Wow, I can't believe the Kenosha Shooter Rittenhouse's uh, gun is in the chat gifting me. Is that vaccination must therefore be equally suspect. America's doctor, Sanjay Gupta, asks Anthony Fauci yes. about this exact study and whether he's considered natural immunity as a factor. And Fauci said, no, I haven't really thought about that. There was a study that came out of Israel about natural immunity. And basically the headline was that natural immunity provides a lot of protection, even better than the vaccines alone. Um, how, what, are, what are people to make of that? So, so as we talk about vaccine mandates, there are, I get calls all the time. People say, I've already had COVID, I'm protected, and now the study says maybe even more protected than the vaccine alone. Should they also get the vaccine? How do you make the case to them? You know, that's a really good point, Sanjay. I don't have a really firm answer for you on that. Which is absolutely absurd that someone of Fauci's acumen with his expertise would not have considered this. And it really is further evidence that he will only consider a big pharma directed s solution, if we can even call it a solution. Uh, it really, cause, cause he's not that much of a hack. He's not that stupid. He knows exactly what he's doing. Of course he and does. They, do, they don't want to consider this because it destroys the big pharma agenda. So that was journalist. 
He's also, uh, Max Blumenthal has gone full anti-vaxxer, uh, by the way. Just full tilt. It's to Max Blumenthal there, talking to Jimmy Dore in the video, Fauci has no answer, why vax people with natural immunity? Which appears to show the medical advisor to the president, Dr. Anthony. Um, by the way, why doesn't Jimmy Dore just Google this? Like, because if you Googled, why vaccinate people with natural immunity? Just type when you're typing accidentally, when you're typing like the most excellent SEO winning uh, YouTube title, just accidentally Google it. You will get an answer. I can tell, I can tell you, okay? A lot of you motherfuckers treat me like I'm Google. So I can tell you, for example, the reason why people with natural immunity should get vaccinated is because studies have shown thus far that the vaccination, the natural immunization from getting the antibodies is not a foolproof method. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people, uh, specifically more than 30% or, or only in 30% of the cases do you actually have uh, develop where you do actually develop significant natural immunity. But in a lot of cases, it's inconsistent. Depends on how much, it depends on how, uh, how badly you got COVID. Depends on a multitude of different factors. So the best possible thing to do, even if you actually did get uh, COVID before you got vaccinated is to still get vaccinated because the group that has the highest level of protection in studies conducted are people who have gotten COVID before or after getting vaccinated. Bro, look up the science of how vaccines work. Dude, I, I know how uh, the science of how vaccines work. Okay. There's little people inside of that inoculation and they have been uh lasered into being tiny like in the magic school bus and they fly around your entire body and they only have a six month lifespan because when you get tiny you can only live for six more months okay and they fly around in your body they go through the muscle and fly around in your body and whenever there's a covid virus whenever you're infected they pee, 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 you shoot it so that uh obviously they can't get all of the covid virus obviously so uh, you can still uh, get some of the uh, the sickness, but like they pee, 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 shoot like all the worst parts of COVID. Like they kill so much of the COVID virus with their healing AR-15s. Yes, that's right. Kyle Rittenhouse literally had the same AR-15 that these guys have. Um, so you avoid the worst symptoms of COVID-19. Anthony Fauci having no answer to why people who have had COVID before and recovered should still get vaccinated. And Blumenfall makes the case that this is a profit-motivated decision on- I just- If they made Osmosis Jones like that and described defeating COVID like that, I feel like more conservatives would be on board. Because one, they're children, and two, like, I, I'm not even kidding. If there's, like, a shooting component involved in the vaccination process, like, in their minds, they'd be like, all right, I'm, I'm good with that. They got patriots. They got them patriotic Osmosis Jones. ...behalf of Big Pharma to sell more vaccines or something. Except, that clip was cut a little oddly there, I'm sure you noticed. You see, Fauci says he doesn't have a firm answer, but then he does keep talking and gives an answer to the question. You know, that's a really good point, Sanjay. I don't have a really firm answer for you on that. That's something that we're going to have to discuss that's regarding nice. the durability of the response. The one thing the paper from Israel didn't tell you is whether or not as high as the protection is with natural infection, What's the durability compared to the durability mm. of a vaccine? So it is conceivable that you got infected, you're protected, but you may not be protected for an indefinite period of time. So one reason that people who have had COVID before should still get vaccinated, Fauci argues, is because we aren't yet sure about the length of time immunity resulting from an infection of COVID might last. So in that case, it's still better to also get the vaccine just to be safe. Dorr and Blumenfall use this one instance of Fauci saying he doesn't have a firm answer to imply that there are no firm answers to this question, beyond the greed of the pharmaceutical industry. But this is not the case. There are answers to this question, regardless of what Fauci said in an interview one time. You know, are they actually interested in answering this question, or are they just trying to make Fauci look silly? So let's have a think about this question. Bloom and Fall and Dorr make the case that a study came out that says so-called natural immunity is better than vaccine immunity, so why should people who have so-called natural immunity still get the vaccine? You know, beyond the one reason that we've already seen, that we aren't sure how long this immunity lasts. Now firstly, I'd answer, there are undoubtedly a lot of people out there who think that they already caught COVID-19, but haven't. If someone you're in close contact with catches it and then you feel sick around the same time, you might just assume you have it too and not bother to get tested. 
But some of those cases are going to be colds, flus, or other illnesses. People who have misdiagnosed themselves with COVID-19, and they're unknowingly walking around today with no immunity, air quotes, natural, or otherwise. Secondly, tests for COVID can give false positives. There are also undoubtedly a lot of people walking around today who assume they've had COVID because they tested for it and received a false positive result. Relative to the whole population, this won't be many people, but it will still be a significant amount. Thirdly, the study mentioned in Blumenfall and Dawes' video, the one they used to argue that immunity from catching COVID is better than vaccine immunity, might be wrong. Blumenfall mentions in the video that he tweeted about the article, so I went and found it, and here it is. Bombshell preprint study of 76,000 COVID subjects demonstrated that natural immunity, so on and so forth. Now, what you might notice here is the word preprint. The study mentioned is comparing SARS-CoV-2 natural immunity to vaccine-induced immunity, reinfections versus breakthrough infections. And if we go to where the study's hosted, right underneath the title it says, this article is a preprint and has not been peer-reviewed. It reports new medical research that has yet to be evaluated and so should not be used to guide clinical practice. And if we click on that what does this mean link, we get a page explaining that preprint studies quote, have yet to be evaluated by the medical community and the information presented may be erroneous. So this study compares individuals from three groups. Those who have had COVID and recovered from it but are not vaccinated, those who have had COVID and recovered from it and are vaccinated, and those who have just been vaccinated. And its findings, remember it's a- Why did you post that and say this is you? That's an old emote. Does that even exist anymore? Or does that actually look like you, Lamont? Because it was me. It, it was me. It was an old emote that I had. Early preprint, not peer reviewed findings are that so called natural immunity is better than vaccine immunity alone. They come to this conclusion because they find more breakthrough cases reported from COVID tests in the vaccinated group than in the natural immunity group. So let's talk about a few ways a study like this might come to some incorrect or exaggerated conclusions. Firstly, there's the usual limitations. It only concerns one type of vaccine, it only concerns the Delta variant of COVID, and so on. But I want to think about possible differences in behaviour between the groups that were compared. As the study itself says, our results might be affected by differences between the groups in terms of health behaviours, such as social distancing and mask wearing, a possible confounder that was not assessed. And another health behaviour that might bias the findings of a study like this is willingness to get retested for COVID. Because this study is reporting results largely from voluntary tests for COVID. It's possible that individuals who are vaccinated are more conscious of the public health, more personally concerned about catching COVID and passing it on, and thus are more likely to get tested in the first place. Maybe people who have had COVID once and not bothered to get vaccinated are more likely to think that they don't have to bother with retesting for COVID. The reason why it's good to watch this chat is because you want to know all of these studies that have been thrown out there. You want to know how to adequately deal with your anti-vaxxer family members when thanksgiving comes around okay because you know there's gonna be anti-vaxxers at the table and you know that they know all of these studies by heart okay they know all of these studies by heart dog and of course they will not accept the truth don't get me wrong you're not gonna defeat them in the marketplace of ideas it's just to make yourself feel awesome by thoroughly and utterly embarrassing your dumbass anti-vaxxer uncle in front of the rest of the family. So much so that uh, they get super drunk and then like end up saying gamer words. That's the only reason why you do this. You're not gonna defeat them. When they go to sleep at night, they'll know that's what matters. Exactly, that's another way. You break their brains, dude. You break their brains. All right, you defeat them in the marketplace of ideas and you thoroughly embarrass them. And you, you're in here, you're probably a child. Okay, let's be real. You're probably much younger than your anti-vaxxer relatives. So that's going to make it even worse. So like, my God, this fucking 20-year-old relative of mine, my 20-year-old niece just destroyed me. Oh, f this is why Brenda left me. So another thing you can do afterwards, and this is like a blanket statement that you can tie to any. One thing you can always uh, say at the end of an argument to make it even spicier is, uh, that's why your wife left you. 
because let's be real if you have an anti-vaxxer relative like you know that's more often than not they're gonna have a wife and that wife will have left them so that will really hurt if you say that that like if you want them to like if you hit them a little bit in the marketplace of ideas they're gonna think about it before they go to sleep if you hit them where it hurts by bringing up the fact that they're divorced they're a victim of divorce court that's gonna cause them to not go to sleep at night and that's what you should be uh aiming at i can't wait for some idiot to clip this entire segment and be like Hasanabi is teaching his community how to break up families blah 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 it'll be fun when they do that i am either since they've already had it a lot of asymptomatic or mild cases of COVID might therefore be being missed in one group, but picked up in the other. <laughs> and the study itself comments on the possibility of missing asymptomatic infections, saying, Additionally, as this is an observational real-world study where PCR screening was not performed by protocol, we might be underestimating asymptomatic infections, as these individuals often do not get tested. Also, if we attempt to use this study to dissuade vaccination, we commit a different type of sampling error. Because in terms of whether or not you should get vaccinated, the groups being compared by the study are not fit for purpose. The study defines one group as previously infected individuals who have not been vaccinated. But for our purposes here, this isn't accurate. The group is actually previously infected individuals who have not been vaccinated and survived catching COVID the first time, if you follow. If you're wanting to know if you should get vaccinated, this group is not a fair comparison to the vaccinated group because it's excluding those who caught COVID and did not recover. The individuals in this group have been filtered already. They've had to pass a relevant health check, that being if you get COVID, will you die and therefore not be able to be retested in the future? Those at most risk if they catch COVID, you know, the people least likely to have asymptomatic cases, the people most likely to end up hospitalized, they've been excluded from this sample already. You can't compare these two groups by saying, look, the unvaccinated people are healthier, so don't get vaccinated, because you're not counting all the unvaccinated people who aren't around to get retested. Now, did these possible biasing factors actually influence the results of the study? Well, I don't know, honestly. It's a preprint study. It hasn't been peer-reviewed. But to be clear here, the study not being peer-reviewed yet doesn't mean it's wrong, necessarily. Preprint studies can be very useful, uh, but what we can't do is say with any degree of certainty that it is correct. I wouldn't bet my life or my health on it being correct, and nor should anybody else. But for the sake of the argument, uh, let's imagine this study is entirely correct. Now, what would it mean if this study was entirely correct? Well, what it would mean is that if you aren't... I'm not texting anyone. Let's keep going. ...aren't vaccinated, you should go and get vaccinated as soon as possible. Because the study didn't just compare people with natural immunity to people with vaccine immunity, it also looked at people who have both. Found that people with both have the best protection. You don't even have to read the whole study to find this out. They put it right there in the conclusions. Individuals who were both previously infected and given a single dose of the vaccine gained additional protection against the Delta variant. Max Blumenthal makes it sound like this is an either-or situation. Either you have natural immunity or you have vaccine immunity and you can only have one. But this isn't how it works. You can both have caught COVID and gotten vaccinated. And this paper, even if it's right, comes to the conclusion that being vaccinated gives you additional protection. So why didn't Blumenthal tweet, Bombshell study shows being vaccinated gives additional protection against the Delta variant? Why vax people with natural immunity? Ask Blumenthal and Jimmy Dore. Well, I don't know. How about you actually read the paper that you cite in your video? That might be asking a bit much, though, on YouTube. Uh, thanks a lot for watching today, folks. But before I go, a general disclaimer. Please do not take medical advice from YouTube videos. True. That was a really, really good, uh, that was a really good video. Here is, uh, Jimmy Dore that- Look at this, this- This was Jimmy Dore's reaction to it. Let's take a look. I mean, I'm sorry, but Sean is about to get thoroughly owned. Graphic here is incorrect. This graphic here was put together by my producer, and- he joined together two sentences that didn't go together, and he added a word, despite. So if you're going to add a word, you have to put brackets around it so people know you've added a word and it wasn't in the source text. He didn't do that. 
But okay, what about all the paragraphs that he avoided? Jimmy Dore. Jimmy Dore, Dubisi claims his blames his producer for manipulating Fortune article. Unfortunately, he can't be with us anymore because I can't have someone who's like that sloppy, stupid, and does something like that. Someone's paying the price for this. Jimmy Dore, caught in a blatant lie, throws his hapless producer under the bus for it, putting the guy out of a job. I didn't know he did that. Dude is a scumbag weasel who, according to him, can't even bother to read the articles he's And then he outing. changed the tense of these two words to make it fit synta syntactically or grammatically with the rest of the sentence. Now, you could combine two sentences, but you have to put a dot, 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 and then so people know that you've, you're you're jumping ahead. And so, but that didn't do that. Plus, that was supposed to be a period, and he put a comma. that, And then he put this, and it actually changed the meaning of... Wait, so the entire... So basically what he's saying is like his entire video about Singapore is just completely uh, built around falsehoods. Not only that, but like... You know, all the numerous paragraphs that he skipped about the efficacy of the vaccine, you know, doing what it's supposed to do, which is not to like destroy COVID altogether, but to uh, allow hospitalization and uh, death rates to be very low. This sentence, uh, it, it, it didn't mean what. The, so, by the way, doesn't change. So I have to cover that, right? Because that was up. And I didn't know about that. I had to trust my producer that we went over the story. He put it together. I had no idea he was going to take two sentences, jam them together, and add a word without putting it in a bracket. So I had no idea when I did this uh, this segment originally that that had happened. Uh, that was done by my producer who put it together. I asked him why he did it, and he didn't really have a good excuse. He said, I was in a hurry. I got sloppy, and I'm stupid. Unfortunately, he can't be with us anymore because I can't have someone on like that who's sloppy, stupid, and does something like that. Uh, and so, unfortunately, he's no longer with us. So someone's played a price for this. So, but Singapore's growing caseload has raised alarms nonetheless because of the speed at which cases have climbed. And there's a period. And we had, but he put a comma, and then he jumps down to here. The policy included... Why didn't he read the article that is like in his videos? Doesn't that mean he's sloppy and stupid instead of his producer? Or maybe he was just trying to paint a narrative and it's not a producer at all. Maybe he does have a producer. Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. I am actually quite surprised that the Jimmy Dore broadcast even requires a producer or has a producer. How has he not produced a, a better background than this David Lynch ass sunken place looking weird red room, but now turned blue ass background. So, and then he tried to then, then he said, despite policies, including stay at home, that is not accurate. And then he, again, he didn't put the brackets and then, so that was wrong. And that was effed up. But the reason why we're correcting that is because it was brought to my attention and I figured out that actually happened and I'm correcting it because. Yeah. Why? How was it brought to your attention? So here's some I'm, again, I'm not going to read you the whole letter because uh, nobody ever does that, by the way. Uh, when you do a news segment, you uh, you you have to curate. If I would come on here and take a news segment and read the whole thing. Right. Nobody does that. When I started at the Young Turks, you pick out pieces of each article and then you elaborate on those pieces. And uh, no one reads the whole goddamn art. This isn't a school for the blind. Wait, what? Why is he admitting to that? I'm not re reading news articles for the blind. Okay. Now, further down the article, Jimmy Dore does something even worse than simply selectively quote the article. He actually changes the text in order to better suit his argument. Yeah, gangster. Uh, why does he was he produce so many reactionary alumni? Dave Rubin, now far right, Jimmy Dore, wannabe Tucker Carlson, Michael Tracy, sweaty nerd who shits on the left and is transphobic. Hassan Piker, virulent anti-vegan and homeowner. I don't know. I don't know, boys. It's just, it's just who I am. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>